Hello and welcome to this tutorial on understanding waypoints and navigation modes in DCS world. Most missions to fly in DCS will have a route assigned to your airplane group that you are expected to follow. This route was laid down by the mission designer and is there to guide you to your objective and back again in the safest, shortest or most convenient way. Well planned routes can be very helpful and add a lot of immersion to the simulation. They may help you meet other friendly forces on the way to your objective keep you away from danger zones, maximize the chances of detecting the enemy or avoid it for that matter, or simply define a patrol route. You can usually see the planned route just before starting the mission by entering the mission planner. Here you can check the details of your route and those of other friendly forces. Be careful here, it looks like you can change the route parameters, add, delete and modify waypoints. Even if you leave the mission planner and enter back again later, the changes persist, but don't let that trick you. After clicking the fly button, all changes will be discarded and the route will stay as originally designed. So don't waste your valuable time changing the mission in the mission planner. So what exactly is a route and how are you supposed to use it in DCS? Every route consists of a series of consecutive waypoints, from a starting point or SP to destination point or DP. Between these two, there can be any number of intermediate points labeled with numbers, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Every pair of consecutive waypoints is connected by a segment. This segment represents the flight path from one waypoint to the next. You are expected to fly your plane from a starting point to destination point, passing through all the intermediate waypoints in ascending order. At least your plane's instruments will guide you this way. However, you don't necessarily need to fly along the segment connecting the waypoints. It is important to understand that the route is there to help you complete your mission, but it's not a binding contract. You can fly a successful mission without passing through all the waypoints, or none at all for that matter. On the other hand, flying a correct route is not usually enough to complete your mission. To successfully pass through a waypoint, you must fly within 500 meters of its center. It doesn't matter what altitude or speed you are flying at, or what direction you are coming from. If you miss a waypoint, the instruments in your plane will still get you to that waypoint. If you prefer to leave it behind, you can make the instruments jump to the next or the previous one. Repeating the action, you can cycle through all the waypoints forward and backward. The starting point of the route is usually a takeoff point, either from ramp or runway. But it could also be a flying point, in which case you take control of the plane in mid-air, when it's already flying. The destination point is usually a landing point, but again it might not be, in which case you eventually will have to find, on your own, an airfield where you can land the plane. The numbered waypoints are usually flying points, called turning points. Every waypoint has two important attributes, altitude and speed. These values represent your plane's assigned altitude and speed for the entire segment, from the previous waypoint to the actual waypoint. For example, waypoint 2 has an altitude of 1554 meters and a speed of 676.8 km per hour. They apply to the segment from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2. After you fly past waypoint 1, your plane's new assigned altitude and speed are those of waypoint 2. A special case is that of the starting and destination waypoints. In both of them, the altitude value is the ground altitude of the airfield, and the speed value can mostly be ignored. At the starting point, the speed that matters is that of waypoint 1, and from the last number waypoint to the destination point, the speeds assigned will be the approaching and landing speeds. The navigation instruments in your aircraft will guide you from one waypoint to the next, following the line that connects those two points. If you stray from that path, the instruments will guide you back to the path, not to the next waypoint. While it is recommended to follow the route as designed, sometimes you must change your path to pay attention to higher priorities, like engaging bandits in combat, or going straight back to a friendly airfield after being hit, or maybe the route will take your aircraft into the face of a mountain and you have to avoid it. If the distraction is temporary, you can go back to your route and carry on with your flight plan once the other matters have been dealt with. As I stated before, the assigned altitude, speed and path are not really required to successfully pass through a waypoint, so don't obsess too much about them. That said, it is a good idea to stay close to the assigned values or else you might have a nasty encounter.
To assist you with flying the planned route, there are three navigation modes available, en route, return to base, and landing. In addition to these three, there is a lasso mode that disables the navigation assist without leaving the navigation mode. These modes can be cycled through using the action navigation modes. The en route mode is usually engaged at the beginning of the mission and is used for most of the non combat part of the mission. In en route mode, the instruments will get you from one waypoint to the next, giving you the assigned altitude, speed and direction for the next waypoint in the route, as explained before in this tutorial. The return to base mode is used to take the aircraft to a good spot to enter the glide slot before landing. The navigation mode will change automatically from en route to return to base when the aircraft passes through the last number of waypoints, but it can be engaged manually at any time like the rest of the modes. In this mode, the instruments will get you to a point about 17 km in front and in line with the landing runway, far enough so that you can start a comfortable approach and maneuver. This is the only navigation mode in which the instruments will guide you straight to the next point instead of to the path connecting the waypoints. It's important to note that in the return to base mode, the instruments will get you to the point in front of the runway and will give you a good altitude and speed to enter the glide slope, but they won't care what direction the aircraft is coming from. However, this direction can greatly affect the options of a good landing maneuver. It's best to get to the return to base point with a heading close to that of the runway. If you find yourself in a situation where the instruments are taking you to the return to base point with a heading too far apart from that of the runway, it is of the utmost importance to get the altitude and speed close to the assigned values for that waypoint, which usually means going low and slow. That way you'll be able to turn the aircraft and align it with the runway within the 17 km segment between the return to base point and the runway. The landing mode is used when you are in final approach and will help you keep your plane in the correct glide slope to complete a successful landing. The landing mode engages automatically when you pass the return to base point, but of course you can engage it manually at any time. In this mode, the instruments will do a pretty decent job taking you to the runway, so follow the indications, stick to the assigned values and you will be fine. This concludes this tutorial about waypoints and navigation modes. In future tutorials, we will see how to apply this knowledge from inside the aircraft cockpit.